Okay, Saving Mr. Banks. This movie will go back and forth with two different stories simultaneously, but that's kind of uh, symbolic of what's on the surface and then what's underneath, because um, whenever there's there's control or hurt or pain, there's there's a belief system underneath and there's really hurt underneath. So anytime there's anger or anything that gets expressed on the surface, it's really because of what's underneath it. But I think for this one, it's really, it's a real good forgiveness movie. And um, it reminds me a little bit of, um, you know, Jesus is teaching if somebody smites you on one cheek, turn the other cheek, or if, if someone asks for your coat, offer your cloak as well. And Walt Disney is quite famous, you know, because of all of Disney productions. We're still going and seeing all these great Disney movies that his company started uh, making with animations years ago, but I guess even recently with like Maleficent and there's just so many great movies. Movies in our collection like The Kid with um, Bruce Willis and so forth. We get to see a little slice of Walt Disney's life out there in California and uh, Emma Thompson plays uh, the woman who, who invented and, and wrote the Mary Poppins uh, character. And so um, the basic gist of it is that um, Walt Disney um, read some of uh, the story of Mary Poppins to his daughters and, and his daughter loved it so much that she really wanted it made into a movie and um, that's what Walt does, he makes movies. So he made a promise to her. So now he will face a series of forgiveness lessons coming from this promise <laughs> to his daughter when he encounters the, the writer coming across the ocean. And um, it's just a tremendous forgiveness movie all the way to the very end. You know, where Walt has to meet her, her many seeming behaviors that, you know, we would say are, were calls for love. And generally he does a pretty good job uh, for the head of a company, <laughs> you know, considering we're working with The Course in Miracles and, and devoting our life to it. But, but Walt is a really, I think he's a good role model. Mm -hmm. So when you're tempted to think this is unworkable. This is completely unmanageable. Just think of Walt. <laughs> <laughs> Tom Hanks plays, plays Walt Disney. And Emma Thompson plays uh, the woman who, who in, invented Mary Poppins. Okay, we're ready to roll it. Okay, go ahead and pause this recording now and enjoy the movie Saving Mr. Banks. And then you can push play again on this recording, and it will continue with the with the after talk by David. Well, back in Australia, in that part of the the film, his he was talking to his daughter about the world being an illusion, mm -hmm. and uh, kind of beware of money; it will come and bite bite you in your bum or something like that, mm -hmm. and. Um, so she, like everyone who comes to this world, has, has a, a, a mistrust of the world. And she has a love for her father. And <coughs> so really the, that's part of the, that part of the movie, the Australian part of the movie, is really acting out of, of that, that belief in loss, that you could lose the ones that you love, like Jesus says. That, you have a lot of crazy beliefs, but perhaps the most crazy of all of your beliefs is that you can lose the ones that you love. So it's kind of nice how it goes back and forth, back and forth between these memories that um, Walt Disney talks about his own memories at the end of the movie uh, in the snow, uh, delivering papers and um, newspapers and 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 his thoughts and memories, but he he really recognizes at the end that that it's all about forgiveness and 
you know, encourages her to let go of those memories and those stories. And that's also spoken about at the very end, that it's whatever is to come is what's already come before, just retold again and again. But, but it's beautiful how the Spirit pours through him in saying that, that it's storytellers, and the, what they're to do is they're to inspire hope and really to inspire another way of looking at the world. So he was using our language there at the end, really explaining to her, you know, that that's what the only purpose of storytelling, it's, it, it maybe uh, can't set things right, but it, it can in imagination, and so you might say it's the spirits, the Holy Spirit's use of imagination that, that brings inspiration, that brings the blessing that brings a new purpose, a new way of looking at the world. And so in the end, it seems like he had to go back all the way across the ocean, you know, to open his heart up and tell her what it was all about for him. And then he really understood at that point that, that it was about saving Mr. Banks, that Mary Poppins was, was called in for that. It wasn't as he and the other guys thought originally for the children. Mary Poppins for the children, but it was actually uh, to try to save Mr. Banks. And, and so the bitterness, I would say under the sarcasm and under the, the control and under the anger is the hurt. That deep, deep, deep sense of hurt. That sense of loss, like losing your father kind of loss which is really what this whole awakening process is about, is this belief that you've lost the one that you love, the one that created you, and, and that there's no way back. Like it's, that, that what was seemingly done can, can never be repaired. And so, all these countless opportunities that we have that were given over and over, that Walt Disney was given, that all the, the songwriter, the lyricist, the, the, the one that, the choreographer, the, everyone, the secretaries, everyone was drawn into this experience of, of choose again, of, of see it anew. And, and it doesn't matter whether it's in your personal history or whether it seems to be in the history of another. Um, it's the same call, and when it's recognized, there's just this, um, you, like the driver, you know, pers persisting and, and really, you know, feeling that love for her and feeling the gratitude, and he was a beautiful symbol all the way through, you know, at the very end where she actually, you know, when she came to the you know, she saw him at the airport to take her to the premiere, she actually ran, ran up to him and hugged him. And he was like, whoa! <laughs> it was really a, a, a reflection of that, that deep healing. So, yeah, I want to open it up to everyone to share your insights on that, because I think it's, it's one of those movies where, you know, it's the, the punchline is forgiveness, as it always must be. And it's always facing those memories of, of, in this case, hurt and loss that are, have been pushed so out of awareness. But she, even when she had very, very bad days, she was like, it's, it's like her unconscious coming up to, to bite her. Um, and that's the way it goes for everyone on the planet, when, when you have those dark memories that, that haven't been allowed to come to the surface and haven't been, the wound has not been exposed, then the characters just acted out over and over and over again. And there is a, there is a, a bitterness, you know, when, until the error is exposed and, and seen as impossible, then the bitterness just persists until that mo moment when it's just seen like it, it just is not the truth. I thought it was very, also very symbolic at the end where she's crying at the movie, the very movie that she was kind of holding the card uh, to the rights, you know, to, um, as, as Walt said, you know, you wanted me to, 
you know, to disappoint you or, and, and I didn't because that's, because that's what you wanted. So it was all, even there, bringing it back to the power of the mind and the power of wanting. Or as Jesus says in the Course, no one can convince you, no amount of evidence can convince you of what you do not want. That the mind is that powerful, and if you decide you're unworthy, then you'll see plenty of evidence for that unworthiness. And only when you have a change of heart about yourself and about God, then did you see a forgiven world. Yeah. So. I loved it when she said, enough. Yeah, enough. Like, she was out there in the light, like in the inspiration, just faced with those mirrors every day. And that had a, a tremendous dissolving effect, you know, subconsciously probably. But still the resistance was there and she left. But when she said enough, it was like she decided to see it differently. Yeah. And then everything switched. That's when she signed. Handed she it said over. it's enough. She, she handed it over. She handed was tired over. of the... And there was Mickey right across that big <laughs> Mickey table. house. So the first time we see Mickey, she's shocked that he's in the bed. And she puts him, <laughs> and she puts him face against the wall like, you <laughs> bad <laughs> mouse. Bad yeah. boy. <laughs> bad boy. Bad mouse. Face against the wall. And then eventually she comes around and has and, tea with him. And yeah, has tea with him. He escorts her into the movie. He escorts her into the movie. Yeah, there's all the Mickey Mouse symbols. The animation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even uh, Walt Disney talking about how, you know, somebody wanted to take, it sounded like, buy out his mouse. Mm -hmm. And he said, he's family. You know, he, he couldn't ever turn, turn him away. He, he was family. So, in one sense, that was good in this movie, that uh, the mouse character, Pete Mouse, was there all along through the very end, even enough. He was there to, to be right across from her when she reached enough. She surrendered and then the fruits. Yeah. Enough hurt, enough meanness, enough control, enough with the, those memories. And you know. remembering it that way. Yeah, enough with remembering it that way. And one tweak in the mind just opens it up, you know, to the movie being made and, you know, as, as Walt Disney said, the children can be, you know, inspired and all over the world, over the world. yeah. So it's that one little Extension. tweak in the mind turn. Yeah. And the assignment was 20 years being offered Yeah. for her to break through this, like, And I love the line when he said, you don't even know what you want me to do to make you happy, or, yeah. you know, to, to make you feel that way. You don't even know. Yeah. Yeah, it could apply to anything. We always, we've been talking lately about with, with a book getting written and made, published, and then the book launch. I've been using the 50 yard line analogy. So, after 20 years, year after year, of asking her <laughs> to sign the rights, she finally does. The candy, the fruit, the pears, <laughs> and everything, and all the stuffed animals and everything, and, and the, really the happiness of everyone, including Walt Disney, thinking, wow, the hard part's over, and now I've got my, my movie made. I've got the, my great writers, and, and all the collaborations, and he was quite confident, but it's like with our book launch, it's to get the book <laughs> printed. Twenty years, actually, that's how, exactly how long. And so we're getting from the Holy Spirit and Jesus this movie to say, now do you want the launch <laughs> to be easier, <laughs> the premiere <laughs> to go easier than that? But really it's very much like that. It was twenty years in the making and many gatherings and, and uh, storing cassette tapes in hot attics and carry them from house to house to house to house and then editing all that Carrie and Jeffrey and Jason went through with these kind of wobbly <laughs> tapes to try to make the audios and then the transcribing and on and on and on. Literally, yeah, it was 20 years of hanging in there and now we're just to the point where we're and I've reached the top of the mountain, now it's time to go down the other side, but, but in this movie it, it, just, it just showed that 
you know, the, the persistence, the dedication, the devotion, you know, to keep a promise. And really, in one sense, that's why we've all showed up, to keep a promise for Jesus, you know. This is not about just a few words going on in a book. This is, it's the same with all the things that the Bible went through to even get published, and then the course itself, and then now with this book, you know, to give people a straight pathway uh, that can, it makes it very difficult to twist and distort uh, the words, even though the words uh, are, were made by the ego, and the ego can distort anything in form. It just, uh, it's just a great inspired use of words to make the path straight. And so we have the teachings, the metaphors, the examples, and then even with modern day monk coming, uh, the stab of these characters, some of these characters trying to go up that summit, like trying to climb Mount Everest or something, without freezing to death. But to make it to the top, so, so yeah, it feels good. Feels like that's a big part of of it. Just like with strawberry, it takes a huge synergy to put that on, and yet it's it's magical when it happens. It's very miraculous. We're going for miraculous because, like this movie, just for me, is so powerful because it's it's very close to the actual experience I had growing up and. I, I thought you had to be Mary Poppins to come in and keep straight, and I don't believe that anymore. I'm going for the miraculous, but just the playfulness, like the Evolve magazine, the way it came in, like that's that's all I want. That's all that I'm offering now. It's just like we got a few ducks lined up in a row, and now we're just we're to be playing and allow all the miracles to come in. Just to do only that, like touch things in a miraculous way, just to allow them. Like that's my call. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's like the higher interpretation of Mary Poppins. Yeah. You know, from the kind of staunch and stern and everything to ah, Julie Andrews. Yeah. What a wonderful actress, what a wonderful symbol to play Mary Poppins that all of the children could relate to. And who played the father? Yeah, and Dick Van Dyke, um, you know, right. playing Bert. You know, um, yeah, just amazing how it all came in, and, and the songwriters and the and the songs that that people still remember. You know, I remember seeing this film when I was a little boy, and I think we went for a, like one of my birthday parties, and coming home with all the songs, remembering, you know, "Let's Go Fly a Kite" and you know, a musical, something we could all sing along with and. And remember, and uh, yeah, it's beautiful inspiration. That's that's what it's all about, <coughs> and that's what I'm getting. I, I Sarah was talking and Suzanne about possibly a book tour on the East Coast right around in September when the book is launched. Jason called in today. Lisa called in this morning. They've had all these holy encounters at bookstores. Um, some of the bookstores where um, the woman would say something like, what are you here for and what, what are you doing? And, and then Lisa just felt the spirit move through her and, <coughs> and talked in very simple terms of what it is for her and then how it just melted and, and it would go in some bookstores, they would say, well, we really don't, don't buy books, but well, since you're here, Let's take one of those books and can you leave it on consignment and da 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 with the, these holy encounters that are happening. But we talked about that this morning, that it's just like these are just the props, the backdrops, the props for it. So just getting into the swirl of all these holy encounters out there, just shining the light, sharing that love, sharing that joy. And in one sense, it's like a calling card or a context, mm -hmm. but the, the focus is never on the context. Mm -hmm really on the joy of the moment. And so, just like the props and the, and the symbols of a, of a stage, you know, are not really about the core of what the, the story is about. It's not really about the, the, the purpose, it's, but they're, they're being used in a maximal way. 
So I feel like that's that's part of it too. It takes it un out of the mundane, like daily life and do this, do that, and to just feeling called to a higher purpose. And, you know, yeah, we used to say that when I took my first trip to the south, southeast, and the car was taken away, and and I would tell the parable of how the car left and came back, and I said, would tell people on the east, or the west coast of Florida, if Jesus had asked to borrow the car for a few days, would you have given it to him? People would go, yes. And if it was just used as part of a parable, that all things work together for good, that everything is taken care of, wouldn't you agree to such a thing? Oh well, yes. So really that's, that's really what's happening here. We don't, there, there's nothing happening like that we can point to in form that's meaningful in and of itself, but then you start to realize nothing exists in and of itself. That it's all your mind and it's all for sharing the love and the joy. And then these are all the props that have been so graciously given. They've fallen in our laps and, and we can simply carry forward with, with what's happened. We've got our script, uh, so to speak, our, our book. I happy dream. I find down in the hall, and I have a film team, and they're editing in different rooms, and they're 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 getting music, and people are composing things, and I mean, I mean, I can't imagine. It's small. It's just beautiful. <laughs> yeah. So grateful, and the joinings, just the connections, like with, just hearing, hearing, what about this, can I have this, and, and like my function, I keep, my function is to keep asking, 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 from a character that never asked, ask, 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 and coming into rooms and not even having to ask now and things, just appearing, mm. so, so grateful. Yeah. Yeah. So grateful to get this feeling like getting to be a child who's leaping. That's what it feels like. So grateful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep, it just keeps, the beat goes on and on. And Suzanne mentioned something about something, a tour on the East Coast, and then ding, my inbox rang, it was airfare sale for the fall. Like, oh, <laughs> for the fall. So I got on there and started looking around, and yeah, there were flights yeah. to yeah. New York, Philadelphia, looking for sale <laughs> from like, Salt Lake City. It was like a minute conversation for that entire thing to drop <laughs> on. <laughs> one minute, and we had an East Coast tour <laughs> that you would fly into. <laughs> One yeah, minute. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. talking, Christian and I were talking about the the impact of of teacher of teachers. Like it was the inroad, mm -hmm. um, and the hours and hours and hours and days and days, months of listening and reading all of that content, and then just to be invited into into this just feel so, really so grateful just to be a part of it in any way. You know, it's yeah. not coming from trying to sell a book, it's like, my gosh, this this book completely changed the direction of my life, so to speak. You know, mm -hmm. I know it's not that, but it's, those are the symbols. Yeah. So like the gratitude to just, and the fun of it, you know, just to be able to, to be part of the swirl that's happening. Here. Yeah. It's been fun too, because when I've, I've just been sending out for the past couple of weeks um, some PDF, free PDFs of the book, but also to just people that come to mind, and a lot of people have come to mind, many, 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 many emails, including, for example, the Luckets. I've always talked about the Luckets because they're, they're in their mid-80s, they were the Course in Miracles pioneers that took the book all over the world, uh, like Johnny Appleseed all over the world with their joy and their their love, and so they were like, great, send us 
we always would be happy to receive of your wisdom and and uh, sent them a PDF and I said eh, if you'd like a hard copy oh yes yes we would we would rather have a hard copy you know to have and this and this and then they started in with um, have you have you sent this to Judy Scutch have you sent this to Carol Howe have you sent this to Marion Williamson have you sent this to the the Course in Miracles Rabbi Benny Silverman they started just putting all these names in there, typing them out, um, and Jerry and Diane and so on and so forth. So, yeah, they're 85, the Course Pioneers, they kept me busy. <laughs> they, just when I'd sent out all these emails, then the elderly beamers come in like, well, well what about this, what about this, what about this? So, so it's, you know, it's just, it's all just symbols spurring the mind on into Extend, extend, extend. At 85, extend, extend, extend. You know, it's the same thing. The ministry is shifting too. We've done a lot of mind training and everyone, you know, we feel the benefit of coming together and the synergy of coming together. But, but yeah, I think for me it was, that, that synergy was going, seemingly traveling and going out and going out and extending and facing all kinds of different situations and seeming obstacles and things, but just being, you know, letting the spirit get be the wind under the wings to just carry it along so that it became very easy and very relaxing and and uh, yeah, just fun. Like like I wasn't doing anything, it was just beholding all the miracles. So I would wish that for everyone and that's this is another context for that. A, a website that's been around for years and years, and now it's in a book form, and suddenly it's brand new, you know. People writing into me, one woman from Wisconsin today with chronic illness and pleading, she spent $250,000, she said, over all these years trying to come to some relief, and you know, please, I'm calling on you, I'm calling on the Holy Spirit, I'm calling on Jesus, and and here, here's a YouTube clip of a live stream from last night, and here's a free PDF. This is what the healing's all about. She's right back. I'm watching right now, even as I, I, I'm watching the video stream. You know, things just keep coming. The symbols just keep coming and coming and coming. Gentle reminders, like, you know, that, that it's, it's a call to rejoice. And the, and the symbols just keep rolling and rolling and coming and coming and coming, so mm -hmm. it was fun today. Then a man writing from, who resigned his job today and who kind of at his wit's end and, and asking for help and prayers. I said, we'll put you in our prayers and here's a PDF and <laughs> here's this and here's Spreaker and some YouTubes and da 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 da, just like there you go. You, if I said, when you resign, then you resign your job, then you can make good use of time. Because there's lots that you can pour your energy and your focus into. And so he wrote back very, thank you for holding me in your prayers, thank you for telling me about these things. You know, he just was, he was, he was laying in bed, just praying, and then seeing the email came in, and he said, oh, this is the perfect answer to my prayers. So, just goes on and on. We decided the book is the answer to all prayers right now. This is the sim symbolic answer. And when, we, when um, Suzanne and Christian and I were in the room, I was holding the book and I said, it's the slipstream. We're just, this is our focus, it's our slipstream. We're all just going to slip into the stream <laughs> of this book for this portal and all other things will be added onto that. Like we're just going to in the slipstream. Yeah. Yeah. Like a water slide, just yeah. slide on down yeah. to the ocean. And then, just like with Helen and Bill, you know, they they had a pretty hectic life there at Columbian Presbyterian Medical Center, and so they cried out, Bill cried out, there must be a better way, and, and surprisingly, even Helen just surprised herself by saying, you're right, Bill, and I'll help you find it. And, and that's where this movie tonight came in, because Christian and uh, Suzanne were talking, interestingly, 
talking about Pam, and and I watched oh, the movie and I go, it's, you know, he it was Walt who kept delivering it. Pam, 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 <laughs> I lost count of how many times at the beginning of the movie it was don't call, call me by my name, and they're all out there on a first name basis, and and here comes the spirit swirling in there, but I that was that definitely caught my attention when yes, I said, I I, for the first time, and I've seen this movie two or a couple times, and then I was like, oh, because this was all about healing, the inspiration and collaboration, that was the inspiration for watching the movie, was the talk that we had back in my room, and now mm. I was like, whoa, <laughs> it was beautiful, that was beautiful. That was yeah, it's, you know, it's perfect too. It's just the, the perfect uh, support for what we were talking about because mm -hmm. we had a call. It was beautiful. It was just mm -hmm. it's it's really do only that, and as long as our minds are clear and inspired, it's like you know join in that. And if there's anything that needs to be raised, that's great. But it's fairly quick. But we yeah. didn't even have any conversation that had been brewing over the last few days. It went totally into and to sharing about what the context was here, and so it was, it was really nice. Yeah, yeah. Just right back into alignment. Yeah. And the depth of it, I mean, it, you, could, you could just feel it with Walt Disney wanting, wanting to have happy children everywhere. You know, that was underneath his, his visions and his, his whole, he, he wasn't there to make a lot of money and to build an empire. He was, he was really driven from the inside to bring happiness. And it's interesting that that's, there's actually a line in the Course where Jesus says, to heal is to make happy. Mm -hmm. To heal is to make happy. And that passion for that happiness is amazing. And even like Salida has reminded us from the Lego movie that Unikitty, you know, starts off kind of as a character that she's so trying, so hard <laughs> to be positive. And then, <laughs> underneath of Unikitty uh, is the darkness that's coming up, and and yet in the end, Michael, she, she saves Emma. Knows, she saves. She saves the whole world. She, she, saves Emma. she saves yes. Emma. She saves the whole. World. Yeah, she saves the whole world with her expressions, and and really that was I I like that in the movie where uh, Pam was crying. Pamela was crying, and, and that was, you know, to me, it was really, first it started with enough. That was the turning point, and then with the crying, you know, and then saying it was the cartoons, yeah. still a last attempt with Walt. But Walt knew. He wasn't buying it. He wasn't buying it, you know. She cracked open, you know. And isn't it great that it's like when you have a hurt, and you allow yourself to feel the hurt, and you even cry, that even that's part of a catharsis. It's not like the ego paints it as a sign of weakness, but it's actually a necessity mm -hmm. when you crack open and the tears come so naturally and there's they're healing tears. And I could feel that mm -hmm. at the end of the movie, that those were her healing tears. Mm -hmm. She couldn't hold back. Mm -hmm. She had that mask on really tight and really firm all the way through. And she didn't give a hint of it, but yeah, in the end she just cracked open and healed. What was like her father? What was the exact same? Yeah. It was her father. Yeah. He only, her father only wanted to be with mm -hmm. the kids. He was always like even on the stage he was talking about kids. Yeah. He's like, never stop yeah. um, using your imagination, he said to her at yeah. one point. He was just he would like leave work drunk to go mm -hmm. play with yeah. the children. Like yeah. that was his passion. And then it took like a very, like a substitute father figure who was so passionate about spreading joy and holding that as the most important thing to help her break out of her, yeah, her shell that she yeah. had on after her father died. Yeah, yeah, he was he was really a bit like Unikitty, trying the, his best to be positive, <laughs> and and then except when the pain was so intense that, you know, when he kind of snapped about, it's not Yates, or was it, it, yeah, was, that, it was a kind of a quip yeah. because he was mm -hmm. in such extreme pain. And then she, but she still, she rewrote the poem, mm -hmm. and she went out looking all over the house to find the whiskey, 
And then he said, pears, pears, and she went out, you know, to get the pears. You know, she wanted to do everything she could because she loved her father. And, and then the disappointment, it's like the disappointment in this world, like, oh, I do all that, I have all this love, I do absolutely everything I can, and he's, he dies, or he's taken away. Even though she did remember that memory of him saying, you know, never, I would never leave you. You know, that was a beautiful, yeah. bright memory, yeah. you know, that she allowed back into awareness, I'll never leave you. Mm -hmm. It was Jesus, you know, mm -hmm. I will never leave you. I'm with you always, even to the end of time. I will not leave you comfortless. You know, all the, the very things that Jesus taught, that loss is not real, that death is not real, that there's no break in connection and harmony. That was the whole teaching there. So it was great. It was really beautifully acted out. Mm -hmm. And she was holding on to a memory. She wanted the memory yeah. to stay. That yeah. was what she needed to let go of. Yeah. The past. Yeah. To share the joy. Yeah. She was holding very tight. Yeah. Even hopping onto the plane saying, I wish it would just crash. <laughs> yeah. 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 I feel like something huge happened here for me, just really quickly. Like, for her, like, it seems like um, she lost her childhood, in a way, and she became this really stiff, very controlling thing. And in the end, like, it, all of it was restored, like, it was just made clean, like, her, all the memories were, like, clean in the end. I feel like... When I, when I came in here, and the movie started, I had a really kind of weird feeling. I don't know. I can't really say why. Almost like a premonition, like, oh, something is going to happen here. <laughs> <laughs> and then something did happen. The scene where he climbs on the horse and he has her sit down on the horse with him and he says, do you trust me? A memory from my childhood came in that I, like, it just has been I would say it's, it's not a bad memory, but it's for me, it's the worst memory I have. And it's clean now. It's like, it was totally retranslated. Just trust, it was just, it was the whole memory scene from my childhood was just trust. Mm -hmm. Nothing happened at all. Yeah. <laughs> it's done. Yeah, it's done. I feel like my, yeah, like childhood restored. <laughs> 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 Childhood innocence, completely <laughs> restored. I'm so glad you said that, because for me, this the singing of the songs was some of the happiest times of my childhood that I can remember. Every family gathering me and my cousin, <laughs> we would bang on the piano, we didn't know how to play it, but we would just say, let's go! Fly. And we would scream, <laughs> as loud as we could. <laughs> Super califragilis and... Um, Raised right out in Southern California, right <laughs> in Walt's backyard, <laughs> and there it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It was so fun. It was so fun to sing those songs. It was so fun to see where it was from. Yeah, yeah we would just go through the whole musical every time mm. we would get together, me and my cousin. Yeah, <laughs> it so yeah. It seems like that the, for a lot of our childhood movies, there were these kind of endings that were so euphoric. The music, Dick Van Dyke, they took me f to, for my birthday to see Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. They let me pick out who I wanted to take of my friends, and then by the end of the movie, we all were like, and the, up goes the car. Oh, chitty Chitty Bang Bang, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang, we love you. <laughs> Once I was stuck, the cat made a jiggle. Everywhere we go, chitty chitty wee, chitty bang bang, 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 bang but we would just play. We would play, they would take us to great movies, and, you know, so when people, yeah, when I got into adulthood and got into seemingly, you know, going to college and everybody, and everybody sitting around talking about their horrendous childhoods, yeah. I would be like, Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. 
<laughs> you know, I, I really thought, I, even when I went, I never really went into counseling. I had my dog, and Chipper, to let all my emotions up, but I thought, no, that was, I got a good launching pad. I got off to orbit. I mean, some people I know, I met, that didn't, it, the rocket ship never got off. It never got, it crashed and burned, it never got off the launch pad, but I thought, I thought, well, actually, I, I got into orbit. But then it was, then that's when my life calling came in, it was like, wait a minute, there's even more. That was just a launch. Those witnesses, like my grandmother, who never, I could never do anything wrong, she was just a witness to a, an unconditional love that was our true identity. And that that whole launch wasn't, wasn't just to stay in orbit on Earth, but it was to literally launch beyond the planets and the stars, beyond the whole idea of gravity, you know, the, uh, beyond the idea of black holes and galaxies and time and space, and that's, here we are, the holy instant is... It's the launch. It's yeah, the it's launch. the launch. <laughs> we don't need a rock in front of book. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, to show the glee behind the book. Yes, yeah. Yeah. That's why I was telling Lisa, because she was like saying, oh, I just, I don't like to feel it all confined. And I said, oh, don't, then it's, it's just go and <laughs> it's your attitude that's the gift. These are your props. Whether people take the books, whether they don't, it doesn't really matter. Just mm -hmm. go forth, you know. It's like that Swedenborgian minister, Johnny Appleseed, he would always have joy in flinging the seeds. He just kept flinging and flinging and flinging. A great metaphor for our life. We're here as miracle workers to keep flinging the seeds and not to look back, and not even look where they land, or if they land. Mm -hmm. How do we know? They could be floating off in orbit. Germinating in space, yeah, you know, you don't space. need soil, you, know, you don't need sunlight, you can just let it, let the seeds burst forth. It's just an excuse to show up and go, hey, hi, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just have this little prop in your hand, nothing to do with it, it's irrelevant. Yeah. I just get to feel like I, I'm getting to stand up here and go, hey, wait till I tell you, you know, wait till I tell you this really good news, that's, that's all it is, yeah. just for me, just yeah. for me. Hey now, hey now. Don't you know. There's no wall between us. Yeah. That's it.